Rudy Gobert, the Stifle Tower, the French Rejection is one of the greatest defenders ever to walk on a basketball court, but he's still constantly disrespected by his peers. They pick him last for all-star games, question the money he receives, and disparage his defensive works. And I honestly feel like Rudy Gobert's defensive excellence is not understood by many because it's not as easily detectable as perimeter defense or players that guard 1-5 through five regularly. The best analogy you can make about Gobert's defense is he's like the roller chain of a bike. You know it's putting in a lot of work and the whole system depends on it, but you don't fully understand it and appreciate it without inspecting it. That's why this video is necessary. We're going to be breaking down Rudy Gobert's defense and analyzing it so you can understand it better. And guys, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. The channel is really growing right now, so join the community. With that being said, let's get into the video. To understand Rudy Gobert's defensive dominance, we have to look at the physical tools he possesses. Rudy stands at a height of 7 foot 1 taller than 99% of the athletes in the NBA and has a wingspan of 7'9 and a standing reach of 9'9. As I mentioned in my previous breakdown video, having a disproportionately large wingspan is so beneficial in basketball. It makes blocking and contesting shots easier, stealing the ball, and guarding players who are taller than you far easier. But an underrated and less talked about benefit of a massive wingspan for a center is the amount of energy you conserve, not having to jump to disrupt your opponent's shot. This allows Rudy to save a ton of energy for the end of a game, and when he does leave his feet, he's very calculated and disciplined with it. Watch this clip here. DeRozan drives in and gives Robert not one, not two, but three pump fakes before going up for the shot. Rudy doesn't bite on a single one and times it right to swat the ball away. Now look at this clip here. When a player is typically taller than you, you usually go right at their chest to drop their height. That doesn't work on Gobert. Just look at this clip. Embiid has Gobert on the low post and bumps him a couple times to lower his height before he goes for a hook shot. It's not low enough because Gobert's massive wingspan easily sends the ball the other way. This picture perfectly illustrates how high you must arc your shot to get it over Gobert's massive wingspan. He has essentially created a force field within the interior part of the court. His mere presence gets players to avoid going in for layups and forces them to rethink their game plan, which leads to hesitation and mistakes, which essentially buys time for his teammates to recover on and jump on. Gobert forces opposing teams into bad shots and rush shots because they know if they face him directly, it only ends one way. Another great thing about Gobert's shot contest is he's made it a habit to challenge plays vertically. This often lets him avoid foul trouble and puzzle his opponents. Gobert's frame is largely the reason why he has the nickname Stifle Tower, French Rejection, and Gobzilla but he's more than just a blocking machine and a rim protector. Calling him that minimizes his defensive work. He has such high defensive IQ and uses his physical tools to his full disposal. Like how he utilizes his hands. They are always in motion, tracing and tracking the ball, making delivering passes that much harder. You don't see this often in bigs or players in general. Here, we see him deny an interior pass and here we see him throw his hands up so the ball won't go through. His active hands are always playing passing lanes, denying these dump offs and closing passing windows. He is simply a defensive monster. Watch this clip here. Gobert has found himself in a 2 on 1 situation. With the fear Gobert instilled in Russell, he makes a smart decision and dishes it to the wide open roller. Against any other center, this would be a bucket, but because Gobert is so defensively aware and quite mobile for a big, he crushes Prince at the rim. Now look at this clip here. Gobert leaves his man to help out on a driver. He goes to contest the shot, leaving his feet. He's in no man's land right now, up in the air and his man is wide open for an easy jam. Look how fast he recovers. Now look at this clip. 
he helps out his teammate and traps Westbrook. Westbrook recognizes this and lobs it over, but look how smoothly Gobert backpedals to steal the pass. He does this time and time again. He's even invented a new way to defend the 2 on 1, performing a jab step, forcing the offensive player to hesitate, then letting his momentum guide him and guard the lob threat. A 2 on 1 situation is not much of an advantage when you have Gobert at the rim. He's a master at reading offensive schemes, knowing when to hedge and drop back to disrupt plays. Despite the clips out there of Gobert being absolutely destroyed on the perimeter, an underrated and less talked about aspect of Gobert's defensive game is how quick he is for a man at his size. Here he's guarding a much smaller player at the perimeter and is still able to keep up with him to get the block. Here he switches on to Chris Paul and is able to keep up with him and block his shot. This clip capsulates it best. Oladipo drives and absolutely freezes Gobert before he goes in and lays it in. Look at how fast Gobert turns around and makes his highlight play his highlight play. He has insane recovery and reaction time, so a lot of the time when you do catch him out of position, his speed and size is able to plug it quick. Don't let these clips fool you. The perimeter may not be a strong suit but he can absolutely defend it. You can't just classify him as just a shot blocker. We classify Hassan Whiteside a shot blocker and a rim protector, but he isn't very good on defense. Matter of fact, all these seven footers have the physical tools Gobert possesses and all have the quote unquote rim protector title, but are nowhere near the defender Rudy Gobert is. What he is doing is truly historic. He has high defensive IQ, extraordinary defensive principle and is a freak of a specimen. He's a modern day Bill Russell and if that doesn't convince you, ask yourself this, is there any other center in today's league that has managed to stay this relevant without even being able to make a jump shot? That itself speaks volume to how phenomenal of a defender Rudy Gobert is. This is Earn Your Ranks, we only talk about ball. Signing off.